Okay, so in today's video, we're going to try to take apart this uh, class 37 from Accurate Skill. So, um, there's supposedly two clips um, on each side. I might have to wedge that in there. Take the roof off. It's interesting. There we go. All right, the wedge shell has come off. Okay, so when you had two small bits fall off and we'll put those back together. So with this thing off, um, we can see we have a circuit board. Looks like there are a series of screws for the circuit board and there's also a bunch of tape. Um, going to want to get the circuit board off in order to be able to figure out exactly what's going on with the um, the loco here. So um, we want to get to the bogies. I'm not sure how we're gonna get to that. It's gonna be pretty, pretty tricky. Um, there's a lot of detail on this, so you want to be super careful. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, tape couplings off. So I think we're going to have to get this circuit board out of the way, and um, it should be interesting. So it looks like there's two sets of identical wires that plug into these three ports. So um, first thing we're going to do is uh, lift the tape off carefully, um, so that we can move these wires. I'm going to stick the tape on the side here of my loco cradle, so hopefully I can reuse the tape. I 
And then there's this other piece of tape right here. And we'll set that in the opposite direction so we know what's going on. And I, I use this small um, wedge piece to um, pry the clips off. Looks like there were just clips and four sections there and it's pretty straightforward for it to pop off. Uh, it looks like it's almost these sections right here. So the next thing to do is going to be to remove the um, plug carefully. trying to so you guys can see but you may get my hands in the way for some stuff and just rock it back and forth it's a uh, keyed so if you see uh, there on this end um, it's actually keyed so that you know there's a you can see it there's a pin missing there so it'll only go on one way so we'll set that aside as well now what we're gonna do is very carefully um, just rock these connectors back and forth to get them unplugged. They're different sizes. Um, so you can see there, uh, there's one, two, three um, connectors, and it's also one, two, three on the other side. Guesses that each one is um, for powering a separate bogey. So we should be able to see what's going on once we get this stuff out of the way. But um, so this is this set of wires. We're gonna move those out of the way, and then we'll unplug um, these three, and then we'll tackle the screws that are holding in the, the board. So we're going to use these IKEA containers uh, just to hold the parts. Um, so I've got the uh, couplings, axle box piece, and um, one of the buffers that was kind of half bent anyway fell off. So I suspect that's a assembly problem. Um, also have the decoder thing, so or the not the decoder thing, but the plug. I'm gonna put the electronic parts in a separate container just so that they don't get damaged. Set it off to one side. Actually, I'll put it under this. And so what we're gonna do next is just unplug um, these. So I'm going to start with this one here. Actually, we'll start with the one on the end. Let's wiggle it back and forth. That comes out. And then it's always a good idea to take a photo before you do this stuff just so you know which way it um, went in. I'm filming this so I can go back and watch the video if um, I have a problem reassembling it. Okay, so now, while you're in here doing this, you have to do this, it's a good time to maybe glue in your your crew and stuff like that, the driver and so on. So I'm gonna move the wires down like this. And it's interesting, this side, they're tied up against each other. And on the other side, they are not. I don't know if that's uh, deliberate or not. So looks like there are one, two, three, four or five screws. So we're going to undo those screws. And we use the tweezers here. Now these are electronics tweezers. So the idea here is that I'm not using a magnetic screwdriver in case I 
damage any of the electronics. Now, worst case scenario, I'm gonna find there's nothing wrong with the wiring, nothing wrong with the bogey, nothing wrong with the motor, and it turns out it's like a defect with this electronic board or something. And if that's the case, I've already got it undone, so hopefully the guys at AccuScale will send me whatever parts I need to repair it. Um, Hornby does, so they don't want me to send the thing back. They'd rather I fix it myself if I can. And I'm cool with that. Uh, get to learn a bit about how the thing is made. And then you can also, you know, pick up some skills. So, looks like there are two other screws, but they are holding in the speaker. So there's these two screws here. I haven't undone them yet, and I'm not going to because it looks like I don't need to. Um, so, next up is to try and see what is still holding the board down. I can see the motor. Interesting. There doesn't seem to be a lot of play in the wiring at all. So you can see there I can kind of lift it up, but it's not. Um, it's not really giving me any option to, to move it around. Um, so I'm wondering how this cab is held in. And it looks like there's a screw there and a screw there, but that seems to be holding in the light. Um, there are two screws on the underneath of the board, so I'm gonna flip it over. There are these two screws here, so I'm wondering if I undo these, if it's going to, it's probably going to take this detailing off, but I'm wondering if it'll give me access. And these ones are longer, so at least I'm not going to get them mixed up. Hopefully they're the same. They are not, so this one's a smaller one. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, and that's pretty heavy. It has like a, a weight in it uh, for that axle, for that, um, board and then this one also has a weight in it and I'm gonna leave those as left and right so I know how they went in uh, it looks like one went straight through the board there still no idea how to get the axles out though see if this helps move the board at all nope So it looks like maybe I can just remove, there seems to be some play here in this. It's certainly starting to feel like they don't intend you to make any maintenance. So that this is glued down, yep. So gently pry that off. Flip it around. There's certainly a lot of glue involved in this. There we Okay, so this looks like it's just for the cab lights. So the cab goes up off there. Now like, this is the opposite way to what I had. So I'm gonna flip it back around. And this is our right hand cab. I don't mix it up. And again, what I did was I took the screwdriver, kind of gently, slowly pried the glue off. The glue isn't that strong. Looks like it's also Maybe got some connect connectors in there. There we go. Hmm. 
Looks like a lost seat. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so I orientated it back the way it was. Now we can see some stuff here. We got access to the axles there. Um, and you can see the seat it did indeed pop out. Um, looks like it's just glued in. And judging from the paint on there, looks like it's been hand painted. Um, it's not bad. So we will stick the seat back in, I guess. Now I'm going to end up losing it. I'll stick the seat in there. I'll worry about it later. Um, so if you look in here, if you can see. Um, looks like the smaller um, connector that was in the middle had the um, wiring for the, the lights in the cab. And then you um, can see here there's a spring loaded connector that says plus five volt A13, A10, and good ones A11, plus five volt and A9. Um, still, I have to pull this wiring out here, and, it's, and as you can see, or, you can see it's kind of glued down. Um, now, what's interesting is there's no shielding between the. Looks like you're just using the glue as an insulator. So, right here, you've got exposed die cast metal up against the wire. So, if there's any kind of damage to any of these wires or there's any loose connections or anything like that. Um, that could have been, could be shorting out against this and uh, causing some problems. Um, these all look like they run to the front board. So this whole connector looks like it's just for the lights. Um, and then it looks like there's a connector here that's going up for the pickups, I would imagine. So um, I'm going to take this board out and with the lights. And it looks like it should just pull out. Not seeing. Oh, there's two screws. There's two screws down in there. Might be um, what we need to do to get that out. So let's um, let's try that. This is definitely going to be one of those, I tore my Acura Scale Class 37 apart, so you didn't have to. So, there are two screws in there. I don't know if I've got them out or what's going on. Well, one of them's out. So here's one of the small screws. Um, let's put that there. And where's the other one? As you, know, you can see that they're they're quite small. Let's us get this um, board out, and I'm going to pull that out, and we're going to inspect the wiring. And it looks okay. Solder joints look okay. Looks like there's some tape there to protect it against the die-cast chassis. Um, so this is the left-hand side, and I imagine I'm going to have to do the same thing on this side. Yeah, so if you can see down in there, but there are two screws. And it's going to be the same deal. I'm trying to lose them. Let's 
for a screw. And there's one more. I don't know if these are actually holding this board in or not. I should probably look. Um, kind of. I assume they'll probably be holding the buffer on as well, so the buffers will probably pop out at some point. That one's come out. Alright, so that's all four. And we'll wiggle the logic board out and take a look at this one. It's the same deal. And it says. That's an ESU 2022 date on it. it. Says ASCL 37 light V11, and you can see there it's got reasonably okay solder. Um, the solder joint here doesn't look great, but actually it looks not the best at all. Actually, uh, see other one like that. Other one is hidden behind some tape. That's interesting. This one doesn't have the tape in the two areas so that might be part of the problem so we're gonna go and put this over here with the other cab so we know what it's for and so what we're left with are um, these bits of wiring here so looks like this um, middle connector or this, these two here are what powers the motor if I'm correct so in theory if I plug these back in, uh, the right way around. Also, I plug them into the right ports. So that one goes in there. This one goes in here. In theory, if I apply power to the wheels, oh wait, I've got to put the blanking plate back in so I'm gonna put those back there so got the blanking plate I'm gonna put it back in remember it's keyed uh, it's, it's keyed so the key areas on there to line that up properly it's getting harder to do it when I can see it all right uh, as a precaution, I'm going to put these screws back in there. And then as a precaution, I'm going to take one of these screws that holds the board in, and I'm going to screw one of them back in just so that the board doesn't go anywhere. I might screw two of them back in on it yet. Um, so I'm taking one of these, just putting it back in there. This is kind of a safety precaution. And there's, there's a bit of play. I just to make sure I don't break anything. We're gonna go on. Put this back in. So if I did this, if I'm right about this, um, these two connectors here are powering the motors, uh, or the motor to the, um, providing the power to the pickup, so, or power from the pickup to the motor. Um, so I think, flick this around now I should be able to get a fairly good idea of whether or not it's a board or, or some kind of other issue so we're gonna leave it like that um, grab our trusty um, crocodile tips here I'm gonna set it on 40 and then maybe Yep. And there's definitely life in it, so. So that one's moving. And that one's moving. So, oops, charging the short dose together. Okay, so those are working. So. Turn the power off. Now I'm going to try something interesting. I'm going to try uh, disconnecting this one. Okay, so I've disconnected the um, left hand bogey here. 
I'm going to flip it over and it should, if I apply power just to this one, it should still work. If I turn it on, it should still work. Okay, so I can power one bogey by itself, which means I can do some troubleshooting with just this one side. So, just to recap, I've taken the whole thing apart. Um, we've eliminated all of this, so we have just the one side of the, um, the board now uh, in play. And it's um, going here, so we've got a couple of wires. We've got it down to like basically three wires from here and uh, two wires to the board to go to the motor. Um, so we should be able to do some troubleshooting and hopefully figure out um, what's going on. So in terms of uh, where things were leaking from, uh, I can see right now uh, there seems to be a, a lot of grease uh, leaking out of this uh, particular section here. I don't know if um, this is a problem or, or what's going on. So we're gonna play around with it and see what we can find out. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to unscrew these two wires again for the logic board. Sorry, un unscrew these two screws, not wires. Um, so uh, that's one. So the good news is I've taken it apart more or less and haven't completely broken it. All right. So. Once I get this logic board out as best I can, it looks like there's two wires going to it. One goes down there somewhere, it looks like maybe to the pickups, not sure. And then this one has two that goes to the motor, and then one that looks like it is going to the pickup. Yeah, look at that. I'm wondering if it's one of these wires that are causing issues. Um, so I'm going to pull this back a little bit. And this one's right in there. So now we've got a better look at the, the board and so on. Which I should be able to pull this out pretty easily. Okay. So now we've got it to the point where we've got access to the motor. Motor looks pretty okay. There's two wires to it uh, going down. Oh, hey, what's that? Um, so I see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. It might be really tricky to show you this, but... Um, right down in there, looks like some of the insulation on the wire is uh, under some stress. Um, right down in there, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I can try to point to it, it's like basically down in there. Um, I'm wondering if the, it's just like a wiring issue, but I can certainly get to the motor now, which is a plus, and I also see how this is working. So, um, the logic board has, oh, they're glued down here. Um, so the logic board has two wires that are going to either side of the pickups and then this one has two wires that are also going to either side of the pickups. So I'm wondering if this wire is having some issues either on the pickup itself or on the logic board. Um, that might be one thing or it might just be an issue with this logic board itself. But not seeing anything, don't see any scorch marks, got a bunch of electronics on it, um, nothing crazy. But I've now got this to a point where it's a little bit stretched, but 
I think I can maybe operate it like this. I'll put some power on the wheels and see if I can uh, figure out if it's a wire issue by wiggling some of the wires around. So I'm kind of curious what this plate is for here. So I'm going to remove it off the side, turn the power off first. That's interesting. It's literally a transistor maybe? Oh, I know, why is that, is this even necessary? So it looks like this might not even be part of the, um, I'll have to put this separate. So this is attached to this, looks like it's a hall sensor. It's covered in some, some stuff. So I'm kind of curious now if I, And then we'll separate it back out, <clears throat> turn the power back on, and it still work. Well, that's cool. So that's a further thing we can figure out from this. So this none of these connectors on the top actually are needed. So let's one as well. It's interesting. So it has some kind of what looks to be a hall sensor or some kind of sensor so covered in goo. Um, so obviously that's one less thing. So just to revise what I said earlier, it looks like we have the logic board has these four connectors here and then these two wires uh, go and feed the motor. Um, so it looks like we have the four corners for the pickups and then these two wires that go to the motors. So this is basically the basic functioning part of the logo that we need in order to be able to troubleshoot why there's an issue with the motor. So let's uh, apply some power to it. So it still has that problem, right? Because that's at 100% power and this thing isn't really going anywhere. So it's got to be either a problem with the um, with the board or a problem with maybe the pickups. So I'm going to do something a little bit crazy here. I'm going to attach the crocodile clips. Don't try this at home, kids. I'm going to try 
attached the crocodile clips to this. So now I've bypassed the pickups altogether. I'm going to take something that doesn't insulate, doesn't doesn't, doesn't uh, conduct electricity because I touch it. And then um, I'm going to have to put this on its side. Okay, so what I've done here is I've applied, used the crocodile clips to apply power directly to the motor. So it's still going through the logic board, but I've basically bypassed the, um, I've bypassed the pickups, right? So it's powering both wheel sets. And it still has the problem. So you can see here, it's at 100% and it's not really doing anything. I mean, it's moving, but it's not moving at 100% power, right? It's like that's off. It's coming on around 20%. So I'm going to take the screwdriver here. You can see it's losing power. Okay, so I found the problem. The problem is this wire to the motor. You see, um, with the wheels are turning, if I take the tweezers, see, the, it's at 100% power, as you can see there, right? And now, the problem is this wire. If I go and I take this wire, and I move it, one of them. Okay, maybe it's not that wire. So we remove the crocodile clips. Now I think what we're gonna do is um, is bypass. If we bypass the, um, let's see if I can bypass this all together. Um, it looks like this, I'm going to take this motor out. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. I can't see the motor, um, can't see the motor contacts because they're buried under the cab here or under the body shell. So I, can't, I don't know what state those are in. Um, certainly can undo the four screws and pop the motor out and take a look. Um, still not seeing a way to drop the boogies out of this. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but not seeing it. 
Um, there's no more screws that are visible, but maybe there's a screw visible underneath the motor. Um, but one thing I can test is to apply the power on these um, connectors right here. Now, I don't think the easiest way to do it is probably just to apply the crocodile clip, but I'm gonna be like super careful that I don't attach, make sure there's no tracks on the other side. Nope, there's no tracks on the other side. So I can attach that and attach this. And I'm essentially gonna bypass um, the motor. And you can still see that the problem exists, right? So I've bypassed the wires there by applying the power directly to those two contacts. So it's definitely a issue with the motor side of things. So I'm going to disconnect this and then undo these four screws and pull this motor out. Cause I'm guessing there's probably some issue with the connection onto the motor or the motor itself, but at least we'll have it figured out. And um, maybe the nice folks at Scale will send me a new motor, who knows? So I'm gonna go and undo these screws from the motor housing. You can see here I'm unscrewing the opposite ones first. These appear to be all the same screws, so shouldn't be an issue. Using the tweezers to remove it. And it looks like it was holding in this plastic plate. Um, so we'll put that there. And if I unscrew this one, it'll probably remove the other plastic plate like so. So now we got left here is the motor itself. So the motor's got these uh, pieces here. I'm gonna see if I can lift this out um, very gently, maybe. Um, yeah, it comes right out. So what we can do now that we have the, the motor out, you can see there's a solder joint on this side of the motor, solder joint on that side of the motor, and it looks like the connection points are in the middle. It looks like a nice motor. Seems pretty reasonably weighted. So what I'm gonna do next is basically apply power directly to the motor itself. And hopefully I don't injure myself in the process. Okay, so I'm not seeing any major issues with the motor, it's moving. It seems to be running pretty okay, so it must not be the motor. So I'm guessing it's the wiring between the motor and the logic board. So the next thing we're gonna do is break out the soldering iron. And what we will do is we will um, desolder the motor from the um, logic board here, and then uh, we'll desolder it at this end. And then um, we'll see if the motor still behaves the same way from applying power at the end of the wires. And if it does, we will then go and um, attach it back to the wheels and see if it's, um, see if it still operates okay. And if it operates okay, attach the wheels, then we know that um, maybe it's a, a problem with the logic board. So next up is to heat up the soldering iron and um, get this unsoldered. Um, it's still attached to the other parts, so it's gonna be a little tricky. 
Okay, so um, just to recap, what we're going to do is we're going to um, unsolder uh, these two wires here. So we start off by um, turning on the soldering iron. And we're going to turn the soldering iron to about 400 degrees or so. And um, hopefully this will be relatively easy to get this off. And then um, we'll see about trying to test the motor out further. Okay, so while we're waiting for the um, soldering iron to heat up, there's a uh, five pin connection that um, powers the, the, the front lights. There's this um, three pin connection that seems to power this hall sensor type thing. And then there's a, a two pin connector that seems to do the cab lights. And that seems to be the, the setup. Um, you have four wires, uh, two each soldered to the corners here and that are from each bogey. And then there's a, a black wire and a red wire that go to the motor themselves. Um, all you need to power the motor is the blanking plate and the wires here on connecting the um, pickups and then these two wires here connecting to the motor. So what I'm going to do, uh, hopefully here in a second, is I'm going to apply a small amount of heat and we're going to try to pull off this, um, this wire. Okay, so I've desoldered the um, black wire from the motor. And the way I did this was I'm very carefully applying the heat to the solder joint. And then I'm just tugging on the wire so that as soon as it's um, able to come free, it's able to come free. This one's on a pad. Um, so hopefully it'll, you just don't wanna to touch any of the surrounding electronics or the board. And you just have to be careful because once this disconnects, it's going to send the board flying. More than likely. So I just want to make sure I'm not going to burn my finger. And these um, factory solar joints can be real pain to get off. You can see there it's starting to burn through the the motor flywheel is directly underneath it so I'm trying not to um, cause any issues with that Seems to be heavily coated in something. So sometimes if it doesn't come off, um, what you can do is grab some flux. So I'm just going to 
probably shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna go get the soldering iron and just do that. Get some flux on it. And then we'll put that on there and hopefully it'll help speed things up. If not, I'll have to increase the temperature of the solar iron, which I'd rather not do, but. There you go. I told you the, the port would go flying. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, turn the soldering iron off so that I don't cause any problems. So uh, just remember the one on the right was the uh, black and the one on the left was the red for the motor. So now what I can do is I can actually remove the motor and take a look at it a little bit better. And then what we can also do with it is now apply the power separately. So this is the hall sensor. No, it's not. It's the hall sensor for this one. Now I'll put that there. Um, so I'm going to connect the red wire up to the red connector. Move the die cast chassis out of the way so you don't have any problems. And then you connect this up to the black wire. And then turn the motor on. And right there, it doesn't seem to be having any problems at all. You can see it's working pretty well. So what I'm going to do next is um, basically I'm going to go and drop this motor back in here um, and see with it connected to the but it connected to the wheels if it will turn the wheels at the right speed because if it doesn't turn the wheels at the right speed then it's definitely a problem with either the motor not being able to do it or a problem with the actual uh, gearbox or something like that and we'll have to take a look at that um, separately this is going to be a real pain to do um, there you go all right so with that in mind it's dropped in um, i'm going to Oh, no. Maybe like tape or something, but for now we'll just do that so that you know, if the motor does pop out, it's not going to touch against the um, board. And then we're going to attach the two wires like so. I'm going to be super careful that I don't touch these against anything. We're going to basically have to hold it so. I apologize if this does anything weird to the camera angle, but keep an eye on the wheels. Um, what we're hoping for here is, you know what? That's probably gonna fly out. I'm gonna grab some electrical tape and just tape it in place because I don't think it's gonna like stay. So we're gonna grab some electrical tape or something and put that in place. So actually, I have some painter's tape here that'll probably work. Uh, I want to make sure it's not. Cut this down a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. So, a bit jury rigged, but should be fine. So, we're going to put that over this. And we're going to pull these wires like so. So, I've got that wire hooked up to there. Put that there just so that I don't hit spark it off anything. Okay, so this is power directly applied to the motor. So what we want you to do is keep an eye on the wheels and we'll see if this now operates at a speed we're expecting. So it still has a problem, as you can see there. So it's either a problem, we ruled out the logic board, which is good. So now it's a problem with either the motor or the gear itself, or it's with these wires. So the next thing I'm going to do is replace these wires um, connected to the motor, and then we'll see if, if that fixes the problem, because that's the easiest thing to do. So we're going to take the motor back out, 
we'll un we'll desolder the wires. I'm gonna turn the uh, soldering iron back on. Yeah, crank it back up to 400 or so. And what we'll do, is, it's moving, but like I've got this at 100%, right? So these things should be moving a lot faster. And if I, oh no. I, mean, I shouldn't be able to stop it that easily. 100% power. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is uh, desolder motor. I know. Oh, look at that. Remember earlier I said there's a problem with black wire? I, I suspect the problems with the back, black wire. So let's do this. Let's um, desolder the black wire and test that. And then um, if that works, I can reassemble it. If it doesn't work, I'll resolder the red wire. Seems like a plan. All right, let's uh, turn the power off to this. So I'm gonna remove the painter's tape and motor pops out pretty easily. Um, going to set this aside and work on the motor. Yeah, I need three for a different tool. All right, so I said I was gonna replace this black wire. Um, so I have some black uh, silicone wire here, which looks to be about the same stuff. So what we're gonna replace it with and we'll try to keep it the same length if we can. So uh, first of all, let's uh, desolder the wire. So again, uh, same drill, take the soldering iron, um, take the soldering iron, yeah, make sure nothing is in the way of it, and uh, cause damage. So you're gonna take the soldering iron and apply it, um, the heat to this joint basically, and desolder this wire. Basically I'm putting tension on the wire here as I'm um, desoldering it. And it'll take a few minutes because like the industrial solder they use really is on there and can take a little bit of heat to get it get through it. Ah, cool. So the wire's off, and it's going to bend the connector up a little bit, and uh, solder joint seems pretty okay. So I might actually be able to apply power directly to it, but for now, let's uh, have a look at the wire here. Where it seems okay. I do have a meter, I guess I could continuity test it, but I don't know. I 
And then right there, it feels like there's a break in the wire. I can, I can just about feel it. I don't know if you can, you can't really see it, but where, where it's bent right there, um, it's, it's got like a, you can feel there's almost like a break in it. So I'm hoping this is a culprit. So we'll set that aside. Um, actually, I'll want to measure it. So we'll take my silicone wire, uh, whatever I did with it. Uh, I literally just had it, what did I do with it? right in front of my face, of course. Uh, all right, so going to take uh, the wire cutters that I had laying here somewhere. Um, yeah, here they are, also right in front of my face. Um, so what we're gonna do is just uh, strip a small segment off. I'm going to twist it. And just to help this thing out, I'm going to um, double it over. So I'm going to essentially, I'm going to try to about double it over. Like that. So basically just made it thicker on one end. Um, I'm going to take solder. I do have a tool I can use for this, so cut my 3D printed wire tool here. I'm gonna drop a small amount of flux on the solder here. And then we're just gonna tin this. So basically what tinning is is basically just applying some solder and to the wire to make it easier. Um, to solder it onto the solder joint. You want to get it completely uh, tinned, so you want to make sure that you get the solder all the way to the insulation, even if that means you're melting some of the insulation to do it. Like that. Then you just rotate it around and make sure that it's good. Alright, so we got a reasonably good Solder joint, solder, uh, solder joint on this. No, let's not do that. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. So what we're gonna do next is uh, attach this to the motor. So again, I'm gonna dip the soldering iron a little bit in the flux, apply some new solder to this, just so. Uh, To very quickly take and sort of bend it upwards a little bit. And then we're going to attach the wire to it. Without causing any more damage. It's kind of tricky because the motor. Ah. 
found a new use for my 3D printed soldering tool. Um, Okay. Whoops. So, got a good solder joint on there. Uh, so, a good solder joint on there. It's uh, not going to go anywhere. This one seems to be okay. So, the next thing we're going to do is just grab this and figure out roughly how long it needs to be. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Um, so I have a bit of margin of error, so if I do mess it up, I don't have to worry about having to redo the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to strip this end, same way we did the other, basically. Now, I'm not going to, um, eh. Yeah, I can probably tin this. Let's uh, go ahead and tin it. Maybe. So what we've done now is we've replaced the motor wire on the black uh, side with our own one. And what we're going to do is we're now going to test the motor again. So we're going to make sure it works first. So I'm going to apply some power to it. I turn it and try the other direction. Yeah, it's working in both directions. Alright, so now what we're going to do is attach it to the, um, attach it back to the gears and wheel sets and see if it works. If it doesn't, then I'm pretty confident it's an issue with the motor, but we will see. So to get it back in, you just, is the kind of a, crosshairs, I guess you would call it, um, slot that it goes in, and then all you need to do is just manipulate, well the motor's got to go this way, um, but you just have to manipulate it so that it, eh, came out down on the other side, I'll try it again, oops, so pull the, you know, twist it onto the flywheel, so that's all on. And then we want it this way, this is where it's orientated. And then while you're holding it in this way, use the tweezers to pull this up. And then this is going to want to have it, you can turn the flywheel um, to get it to align. Oh, 
like so, and then it, it should just slot in place. Now I, I immediately see a problem here. Um, it it can short off of the. It's going to short off the um, the chassis there. Oh no. That is definitely going to short. So let's. Use a screwdriver to get it back out. Yeah, it's definitely got a short against the chassis. Maybe that was a problem all along. Okay, so to prevent it from shorting against the chassis, I'm going to take my bit of tape here. Now, this is not a long-term fix. This is just a kind of test and see if it works sort of thing. Um, but Okay, so we're in. Let's manually make sure this it works. So manually, it seems to work fine. You can see there, it's working. All right, so we're gonna turn this thing on its side. Oh, Put our temporary hold in place there. And let's see what we get. So we got our, our two wires. Our board is out of the way. So we're going to apply the red wire to that, and then we're going to find the new black wire right here, and we're going to attach that, and then move this one out of the way. Yeah, so the problem is, is definitely the motor. You can see there it's speeding up by itself. We've bypassed the logic board. Um, the motor was doing this when it wasn't connected to the wheels, so my guess is the, the motor is definitely at fault. So, unfortunately, this is not something I'm gonna be able to, um, can't fix the motor, right? So we're gonna have to replace the motor with, with something else. So I'm gonna have to reach out to the folks at Scale and have them um, send us a motor. But you can see there, the motor's doing some weird stuff. But what's interesting is that it does feel like it would be what you need at 100% power. Now the question is, is the motor faulty or did the motor need to be kicked a little bit for it to work right? We dial the power back down. So 
So I'm gonna leave it run like this for a little bit and see if it loses power. Yeah, it's losing power. It definitely feels like a faulty motor. But I'm gonna let this run for five, ten minutes. See what happens. It's doing better, so looks like the black wire and maybe it was shorting off of the um, the chassis periodically. So just to give you guys a quick rundown, um, there are three connectors and the three connectors here are all to do with um, lights and the hall sensor. There's a uh, five pin connection that goes to this uh, light adapter board that runs your, your lights on the front of the loco. There is this uh, two pin uh, one that goes to your cab lights and then finally, there's this uh, three pin one that as far as I can tell, goes to some kind of hall sensor. Um, I'll have to go and look under a microscope to see what piece of component that is, but it, it kind of looks like a hall sensor or a transistor or something. Pretty sure it's a, a hall sensor. Um, and that is then wired into the, uh, the bo logic board here. Uh, you have the blanking plate with the lights, uh, so you can use these uh, switches here to switch on and off uh, various different lights, whether it's the front, the back, uh, the cab lights, and, and so on. So if you're running it in different formations, you can do that. Um, and then right here, we have the dip switches. Now these dip switches are configured for DC operation. Um, the way they were configured before was for the ESU, but it had no real impact on the loco itself. Uh, you can see on the underside of the logic board, there is what looks to be a speaker, a bunch of capacitors, and a bunch of other things. Um, so the way you take this uh, apart is there are, on the body shell, there's just a couple of clips in the, in the corners. And so what I did was I used a very thin piece of plastic uh, from the bottom up to basically pry it off one side and then pry it off the other side. Um, a couple of small pieces fell off, including a buffer, which I'll have to fix, and a small piece on the uh, bogey, but nothing nothing crazy, so it's relatively easy to take apart. Um, there were uh, four screws that held the logic board in place. There's these uh, other two screws, but they're actually for the speaker, so you probably don't want to mess with those. Um, you have to pry the cabs off. They are basically glued on, and then you take the wiring off. But basically all the stuff that's plugged into this can be removed. The power for the bogies um, from the pickups is provided um, by these two connectors um, for the left hand one and then these two for the right hand one and um, it's just two wires. And then there are two wires here uh, that go for the plus and the minus onto the motor. Um, the motor itself, if I remove my jury rigged uh, piece of tape here. The tape was just holding it in so I, while I ran it. Um, the motor has uh, two um, has two poles and base or two um, contact wires, a black and a red one. This wire seemed to be faulty on mine, so I um, replaced it, hoping that would might fix it. And it did improve the speed. It got up to 100% there, but then you could see that it was um, kind of wavering in and out. So obviously um, there was more to it than that. Uh, you can see um, it's got just these two um, two axles or two uh, drive uh, flywheels uh, here, and then the transmission uh, goes from here to here, and it it works pretty well. It's uh, looks a little bit plastic. Uh, Gearing here looks fine. I wouldn't worry, like I said, about the, uh, the grease. It just seems to be like leaking through. So I'll probably clean that up and re-grease it when I reassemble it. Um, to test the motorboard, and you'll see this in the video, um, I initially put uh, crocodile clips on one side to um, 
power uh, the board, to see if the board, um, maybe it was a problem between the pickups and here, but it still did the same thing, so that kind of eliminated the pickups. Um, I went and applied it directly to this part of the board, which is a bit risky, but as long as you don't mess up the tracks or get it across tracks, it should be fine. And, and that too um, still had the problem, so I knew that it was between the logic board and the motor. So we unsoldered the motor and tried to run it that way. And I noticed um, when I tugged on the black wire, it gave a few problems. Like it was just it cut out a few times. So I resoldered the black wire and it ran fine for a little bit. And then ultimately what happened was it started exhibiting that loss of power again. So I suspect the problem is with the motor. Um, it's probably got some kind of defect. And what we're going to do is we're going to send a message to Acrea Scale and ask them if they will uh, send me a replacement motor so that I can um, you know, get the Roco back up and running. If for some reason they won't send me a replacement motor, um, what we'll do is we'll pop the flywheels off of this and um, get a motor that will fit in there and see if we can uh, get it to work. Now, um, I'm not too keen on a couple of things. Um, there's really no um, there's just glue, uh, the way the wiring was routed, and if you had a break in the wire or something like that, it's going to short against this. So an improvement would be to put some kind of insulating material um, between the wiring and the die cast chassis. Likewise, the motor itself, the prongs for the connectors are very close to these edges here on the die cast chassis. So if there's anything wrong with the solder joint here or the connector is a little bit bent, um, it's going to short off of this with any kind of movement or something like that. So this would be another improvement is to put some kind of insulating material around the motor. Uh, other than that, um, there's these um, detail boxes underneath and uh, they have these fairly substantial weights in them. This is actually pretty heavy. Uh, it's on both of them. So it's uh, an interesting uh, setup. Uh, it seems to be really well made. Um, wiring is a little thin, so I'm not sure if that's uh, a good thing. And um, I think, like I said, the, the options there of shorting some stuff off the die cast chassis uh, is also a problem. So there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, on the logic board here, there are uh, three prongs on either side. So there's three prongs here, and then there's three prongs on the other side. And those actually touch up against uh, these uh, three points here that provide, um, it looks like the cab lights on the top. So it looks like they, um, if you look there and there, there's uh, they provide what looks to be the, the top of the cab lights, whereas the front was a, a separate uh, set of lights that are in the cab. So if you uh, look at this, um, it looks like there is a set of lights for the instrument panel and that's how they are, are separated out and this might be a little close for you but anyway I thought I'd uh, just uh, point that out. Alright so that was the whole video. I uh, hope you guys uh, found it enjoyable and um, I will do a part two whenever I get a replacement motor um, but I'm gonna basically box this thing up into a uh, IKEA container and uh, let it sit there until I get a replacement motor. So um, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time.